Okay, so where do we even begin here? Remember this? There has been an awakening. Have you felt it? Well, that was a load of shit. Right, so Star Wars is a mess, and honestly, that is an understatement. We're talking Star Wars, you know, the biggest franchise to ever grace the Earth with a fan base spanning and cultivating generations upon generations of its fandom, spreading from family to family, friend to friend. I mean, let's just be transparent. No matter how you want to put it, Star Wars is the biggest franchise in the history of the world. A franchise that created lifelong legacy cinema characters like Luke Skywalker, Han Solo, Princess Leia, Anakin Skywalker, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Yoda, Darth Vader, Chewbacca, Boba Fett. Shit, they even made droids and little teddy bears that have become household names. I mean, everyone knows C-3PO, R2-D2, the Ewoks, I'm probably missing a few. Oh yeah, right, I forgot about this fucking puppet. God, this fucking puppet. Hello, puppet. Star Wars was a franchise that transcended cinema with each and every installment, and while some did more than others, it was an experience to watch Star Wars. The interconnected stories, the characters that spawned from it, and the world itself was simply something that seems to be missing in this day and age when it comes to our Hollywood entertainment. Star Wars was must-watch cinema. Rather that became your family's favorite franchise to watch on the couch for movie nights, movies that you're showing your girlfriend for the first time, or times you just need that good old nostalgia for great character writing and storytelling. Star Wars was always there for you. And that is the point. Star Wars was an IP and a franchise that was destined for greatness 20 years before I was born. And well, um, uh, until recently, I thought it was going to be forever until this happened. Somehow Palpatine returned. Ray Scott. Fuck, that was so bad. I honestly can't even believe that was still even put to screen. We as fans did not deserve that. And while over the years of watching some of the most delusional pretend adults and their employees in the history of the world absolutely obliterate the franchise that we hold so dear to our hearts, Unfortunately, we still care as fans, and that's the point of today's video. Ahsoka Tano, one of the most interesting characters in the history of Star Wars to never be displayed on the big screen, but slowly became one of the most beloved, interesting, and fan favorite characters in the entirety of the Star Wars franchise. But why? With the main question actually being, what is the difference between Ahsoka and, say, Rey Skywalker? before, um, a certain someone in Hollywood decided to do absolutely disgusting and heinous things, and before those inevitable truths came to light, we used to have something in cinema that might be called a relic in today's era. We had characters. Notice I didn't put female in front of that. And while, yes, Hollywood and I guess the world as a whole is definitely better off with that certain man who did those certain things behind bars, the overcorrection and tonal shift of the solution of it all makes cinema today simply unrecognizable from even just a decade ago. Our main topic of what I'm going to be highlighting today is how I believe Ahsoka Tano became one of the most recognizable, strong, and greatly written characters in entertainment itself, not only in just the Star Wars universe, and then touch briefly on if Ahsoka Tano and the show Ahsoka itself can save Disney Star Wars. When discussing the tonal shift and the overcorrection that Hollywood felt as if was necessary for the situation that they found themselves in, we must first talk about what came before. Enter in Ahsoka Tano. As a new original character being thrown alongside some of the heaviest hitters the franchise had to offer, let alone being the unseen and unannounced new Padawan to Anakin Skywalker, one of the most notable and recognizable characters in cinema history, as well as thrown into the roadblock that she was going to be introduced in a new animated TV show, diving into the entirety of the Clone Wars era. Again, I say animated. Luck was not on the side of Ahsoka Tano's character. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. And it turns out, when first introduced, the character in the show as a whole 
felt that backlash. As a character created completely from scratch by George Lucas and Dave Filoni, the challenges were astronomical of how she would be able to fit into the story that was already written, with the two eventually finding the healthy medium of showing not only her specific character journey, but how her character affected the character of Anakin Skywalker, showing how Anakin had developed from a brash, hot-headed, and undisciplined Padawan in the second movie, to the more powerful and reserved Jedi Knight that was showcased in the third installment, and that decision alone did wonders for her character. Ahsoka wasn't written to be the de facto and quote-unquote most important character or the key to everything in her respective show. Characters were characters that can only be as strong as the characters beside them. Wait, that actually sounds pretty familiar. Right, that's what I'm saying, Caesar gets my point. But in doing so, it made the character dynamic between Ahsoka and Anakin one of the most powerful and easily a top three fan favorite character in a franchise that has extremely interesting and complex characters already. Giving Anakin the responsibility of a Padawan was meant to place his character in a role that forced him to become more cautious and responsible, as well as providing him with the insight in his relationship with his own master, Obi-Wan. And the show did well at depicting how their relationship matured from master to Padawan, and it equals the end of their stories from Anakin and Ahsoka respectively. But never once was it mentioned that Ahsoka was a woman. <laughs> or simply had godlike abilities that made her better than the rest, or making the mistake of introducing her as an already complete and developed character from the very beginning, therefore making her just an obnoxious plank. She was just a supporting character, eventually making her way through the ranks of eventual fan favorite, and a character that has become so integral to the story of Star Wars through character development, character choices, character relatability, and incredible skills with the lightsaber. And that's not an easy path to walk. Now look when say compared to Rey Skywalker, a character that Disney Star Wars basically did the complete opposite with. Introducing, or what might be a better phrase for this situation, throwing and shoving a character in my face that doesn't share any of the qualities of the character that Ahsoka demonstrated throughout her runtime, but also lacks the development and the faith from the fans to actually become invested in her character by the end of her runtime, this is what I like to call insecure character writing, a phrase and term that I'm sure you have heard me use many, many times over the videos covering Disney Star Wars and definitely Disney MCU. The problem with creating a character that is already fully developed with no flaws and major buffs that can't be explained by watching the character in their own media space, but different sources of media that most viewers don't have the time or interest to read, you run into the problem of basically not having a character at all, which is what we have going on now with Rey Skywalker. When you think to yourself the starting point of Ahsoka's character, rather that be her fighting skills, her wisdom, her mindset, her character choices and decisions, there's a clear wavelength and moments throughout her time on screen that justifies the cause and showcases a clear and concise path of why Ahsoka's character ended up being the way she was at the end of her character journey, which I might add isn't even over now. Compared to Rey, the justification simply just isn't there. When first introduced to Rey as a character, well yes, the Chosen One from a Sand Planet was already a storyline that we have seen in great, great detail. The character of Rey herself could have definitely still worked, but unfortunately from picking up the lightsaber and in a matter of a couple hours beating a fully trained Jedi with training in the form of the light and dark side of the force to making a fool of Luke Skywalker, one of the most beloved characters in the history of cinema and strongest Jedis to ever walk the galaxy, to force healing, force skyping, to taking the name of characters that she had no business being a part of. Her character was made a joke after The Last Jedi. Thanks, Ryan. And it's crazy because with Rey totaling a healthy amount of runtime with around two and a half hours of screen time in the entirety of the sequel trilogy, basically an entire feature film dedicated to her herself as a character, 
It's truly criminal that when it comes to all of the aforementioned character buffs dated previously, that only around 2 minutes and 34 seconds of all of that was training. What the fuck? Like, fuck me, how was anybody supposed to get behind a character like that? A character with no relatability, a character that was already fully developed with seemingly no flaws, and a character that people seem to gravitate towards within her own universe with the audience having no idea why. And it's a shame when it comes to Rei's character, but it really showcases why Ahsoka is one of the strongest characters to be introduced in Star Wars, and 100% one of the best quote-unquote strong female characters to be introduced in entertainment as a whole. It's why I believe Ahsoka should have been the main focus and the main piece of the sequel trilogies, and it's a shame because now Star Wars is at the lowest point that they have ever been in in the history of their franchise, even lower than the fan theories of Darth Jar Jar. The character of Ahsoka is now being thrown into the flame that has taken out so many of our legacy characters already, and with the way that the fan apathy has grown for Star Wars over the past couple years, we can only hope that Rosario Dawson and the Ahsoka show can save the desolate wasteland that is Disney's Lucasfilm. Of course, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video, and if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. As always, comment down below how you guys felt about Ahsoka as a character, and honestly, the mismanagement of Rey as a character. Trust me, there's no slander here. Rather you like the sequels, or rather you like Rey Skywalker as a character, make sure to let me know in the comments below. Oh, I should also say that I did watch the first two episodes of Ahsoka. It was pretty good, I guess. Nothing, like, too crazy. I don't think I'm going to do episode reviews. I'll probably just review the whole thing at the end of the show. Disney Star Wars still doesn't understand lightsaber stabs, but they did at the beginning of episode one, but then at the end of episode one, they... I, I, I don't know what they're doing there, but it's whatever. I hope you guys are enjoying. I'm semi-enjoying. Prayers up, I guess. Again, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. But otherwise, that's all the words I got for you today. Bye.